everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Today I am going to do a kind of meditative sort of um, um, painting. I don't know if any of you will have seen um, my pebbles that I did uh, a week or two ago, which um, was, it turned out quite well actually. I was quite pleased with the way it turned out. Um, I've never painted anything quite like that before. And I'm going to do a similar sort of thing today, but this time with shells. Um, and I'm carrying on working in my um, Etcher sketchbook, which they very kindly sent me, uh, along with, along with what, I can't remember, on its own perhaps, I don't remember now. Um, yeah, so that's really nice. It's lovely paper, I think it's Baohong paper, although they won't tell me. It's a secret, I suppose. And so I don't know if any of you, I'd be very interested to hear in the comments below um, if anyone's used Baohong, the Chinese watercolour paper, you can get it on your side of the pond easily in Amazon. Over here it's a bit more tricky. I'm having a problem with ordering things from America because we've got this crazy situation now with tax and um, customs and they're making it really difficult for us to buy from America. They really, really are since July. So I end up paying more in taxes than the shipping and the uh, item combined, which is just insane, you know, a 10 pound pad of paper and it ends up costing me $60, just nuts. Anyway, I've put my um, washi tape, which you can buy in France. Very pretty this one, isn't it? I put that around the outside of this piece of paper and I've brought some shells from my collection to act as moral support as we start this painting. So I'm going to put those there. And um, yeah, before, just in case you've forgotten, we did this painting um, and I used various different techniques on there. Um, uh, layers of different, uh, very light colored washes. Um, we did some masking out with um, this, uh, not that, that's a water pen. Where is it? Here we are. With my Molotov cocktail masking fluid pen. That's very useful. We'll probably use that again. That made really nice lines like this on the on the stones and these dots. I used some salt to give some texture here and here. That salt gave that texture. Um, and did a lot of bleeds, runs and wet in wet and so on and so forth. Some of them were just painted in one colour, some of them had two. Just a variety of different techniques. So for the shells, I've got a photograph of a pile of shells because it's impossible to work without something to guide you. This is a photograph from, um, actually from eBay, I think. Somebody is selling shells. So this is a pretty good starting point and it gives me the colour guide that I need for this painting and for this painting therefore we're going to be using um, Trinacridone Gold, um, Cobalt Blue, Burnt Sienna, Sepia and possibly Potter's Pink. There's a couple of pink shells in that uh, collection so that would probably work quite well for that. And I'll be able to mix darker colours by adding blue and brown together. We can get to a darker brown. Um, and we'll see how it goes. A lot of the shells are on the rusty side, but I don't want to use this. This is Venetian red, which looks a lot like some of the shells in terms of colour, but that's opaque. And the one thing that you will have realised from these, from this selection, with the exception of this, which is a granulating semi-opaque pink. The others are um, 
more or less transparent colours. And so if we test them out and we have a look and see how these are going to work. Um, uh, if I pick up some of this burnt sienna and if I was to put it over this bit of blue, you can see there that you can see the blue quite clearly through the burnt sienna and these other colours will also um, have a similar effect. There's This is cobalt blue going over quinacridone gold. And um, then we've got uh, quinacridone gold here going over cobalt blue and see how you get green, but you can still see the blue through it, so it's transparent. And then we've got sepia, which is, I think we could say a semi-transparent. Uh, semi, semi it's actually pretty transparent, it would depend on what brand you've got, but that's also a light reflect, um, a light permitting colour. Uh, and the um, Potter's Pink is also, well, is interesting because it's, it's a, what they call a granulating colour. So as that dries, it'll dry into a kind of granular finish with dots and texture on it and it's a little bit opaque you can sort of see there it's settling into a little bit opaque so those are the colors we're going to to use that's burnt sienna which when you mix it with cobalt blue gives you some lovely seaside grays and blues a sunshiny yellow greeny tinge of the quinacridone, some texture, which when you drop it into these other colours, it's going to immediately bring out, especially if you combine it with the blue, it'll bring out some texture. And then for some of the darker lines, we might want to go into the uh, sepia side of things. So that's how I choose my palette for this drawing painting. Okay, so that's that sorted. So now I'm going to take my pencil and sit down and, uh, and draw this. And I was thinking about this <coughs> earlier. And um, I think you have different ways of approaching this, don't you? But I think it's probably if you're going to do something like this, you might want to start with the shell that's in the middle and then work out, perhaps kind of in concentric rings, maybe. That's one way of doing it anyway. And I, I kind of was thinking that might be a good idea for this one. So I'm going to start with this, this shell here, which has got a pointed corner and a nice curve around there and just very lightly indicate the main colour boundaries. It's got a couple of rings here and a ring there and this area here in the middle is very much uh, very slightly darker than the rest. So that's that one and then so next to it I think we'll put what looks like I don't know if it is, but it looks like a mussel shell. It's that kind of colour. So we'll just draw that now. And this has got sort of lengthwise lines going this way, and then some bands here. And this is just as a rough guide to give you some shape when you come to colour it in and give you a guide. Um, this is a, obviously this particular uh, painting, although it's similar in the way it's going to be done in as much as where there's the background, it's going to be dark. So that will make the whole thing stand out. Um, this is a little bit more complicated. So I suppose you could say this is the next step. 
in learning how to do this kind of painting. So we're doing the same with the rings like that. This is the pointy bit. Um, because the stones, you really, 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 you completely uh, didn't matter what you did, did it? It was going to look like a rock. And this one, I've made a mistake there straight away. So we get our rubber, don't be afraid to rub it out. This paper, this etch sketchbook, every time I say that, I think of that toy that children used to have, etch sketch I used to have one of those when I was a kid. Um, this has got a scalloped edge, very lightly scalloped like that. And then another scallop there. And then it's got that pointy shape and a very, very light band there. So this one is going, just touching that one. And then we might put the corner of another one up here. Um, okay, so now I'm going along and basically putting in place the, um, the main shells and then we'll fill in the gaps afterwards with some more. This is another one that's got uh, lengthwise and then near to the top it goes that way. And here I think we'll put a pointy one like this, a little bit like that. Only not quite. I'm going to put one that's a little bit easier. So that sort of shape, overlapping. I'll take out that bit there. And that bit there. And then we're going to have a fairly big one here. And he's got sort of dots. I won't necessarily indicate them much, just a little bit. Some dots coming in that direction. And I think I might enlarge that a little bit and just take that round. And then here we'll have another one. It's got a sort of point. We're looking at this one a little bit from above. So the Shape will be more like that. And then underneath here, we'll put another one like that. We can't see all of that one. Maybe I'll just put a small, little, tiny one there. Just like that, and then we rub out the bit which is now behind because it's lying on top. And then here I'm going to put one of those ones that's, I don't know the names of any of these at all. So if this one goes like this, I've seen most of these shells, I've got most of these shells in my collection. And then here we're going to have one of these, a biggish kind of fella. It comes in like that there and out like that. And he has got, looks like a giant slug, don't tell anyone. 
And then we'll put another one of these here. And this has got the same, the lines going this way. And I'm going to put one here like this. bring that down a bit closer over there and then maybe one of these we we'll put that here so that's going to have a pointy there and it's got a very kind of rough sort of and then if that's the top it's going to go around like this Like that. I think we need another small one in here. And maybe we'll put just a tiny one underneath. There. And um, so that's a big one. So we'll have another, another big one here. Here I'm going to put one of these. It's got a kind of scallop and then there's lines coming up. It just gives you the idea of what the shape is. And we'll put another little triangular one in there. And let me see, shall we put down here? Uh, maybe another one like that, perhaps. I'll turn that one round and draw that. So we've got the side piece and then it comes up like that and goes over and then scallop round. Actually, I think that goes a bit higher. And then these all go up to the point. And here I'm going to put one of these ones like this, which has got, comes up like that and then got points, points, so, and then round, very, very difficult. Very difficult to draw. has got lines going this way. Not much there. And here I think perhaps um, we need another biggish one don't we? So we do it like that and just have the Lines going around like that. That's the previous one. And then how about 
we just do a circular one here with those kind of concentric lines. Another one of those here, partly off the page. And I'm talking really quietly because Arthur is in the middle of his afternoon nap and I don't want to wake him up. I think he will wake up any minute now, especially now I've said his name. And I'm going to just draw one off the page here, just a big one, which obviously is going to have to come like that. And we'll put a triangular one here. And then here, uh, maybe another one of those like that. If I remember rightly, they come in all shapes and sizes. So that's, that is the whole page filled, I think. So, uh, now we can start the painting. Hmm. Fingers crossed. Okay, so um, I might put a few lines on using my Molotov pencil brush, whatever. Just a few textures here, this one has got quite a lot of scratchy texture and this one has two and this one has got dots in lines. And um, let me see, well we could try and make life easier by putting, um, hmm, we could try masking out the ones that are going to be lighter in colour, but I'm not sure I really want to do that. So I'm going to put some dots on this one because that one is kind of frilly. I keep my fingers crossed and probably just to balance it off we ought to have something over here what should we do over here no I don't think I need I can't I don't think Okay, to get myself warmed up on this, I'm boiling hot actually, we're going to have air conditioning fitted. We're going to be probably the first people in Brittany to have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Because I can't take it any longer. <laughs> Potter's pink into that one. And maybe this one. And um, maybe also this one. And then I'm going to drop in also some burnt sienna. And then this one here, I'm going to do with a mixture of burnt sienna and Potter's Pink. This one I've got to plan for. I'm going to let that dry, then I'm going to mask out some lines and then I'm going to come in with some more lines on top of that. Remind me if I forget. Um, quinacridone Gold for this one here. And 
and it will need brighter band like that. This one over here, quinacridone gold mixed with burnt sienna. And a little bit of Potter's Pink. Making it a little bit lighter than that side and we'll just let that one blend. And then this one in the top corner, that's got to be also Potter's Pink and, Quina and uh, Burnt Sienna underneath. And then we'll put some lines on there in a darker colour. So let's um, put some blue in, shall we? Shall we come in here with some cobalt blue? And I'm going over the masking fluid which I hope when I rub that off, it will give me a little bit more texture. And um, I'm going to drop a little bit of burnt sienna in, in a couple of places. Like that, and that will bleed in and become slightly brownish. And then we've got another one here, which is also on the blue side. It's a little bit more um, grey, a little bit paler, and it's kind of in rings, so the tip part here is darker. And we'll just bring that round and then we'll put another layer on that once that layer's dry. And then here we've got another one that's pinky orange. So this is a mixture of canacridone, burnt sienna and potter's pink. And just drop those in and allow it to find its own Place and we get a nice variety of colours then. And then in the second layer, we can come in and emphasise the vein, the not veins, the, the ridges or whatever we want to call those. Um, this one is a kind of creamy colour. So I'm going to try um, plenty of Potter's Pink with a touch of a touch of um, quinacridone watered down and a little smidgen of blue to give me a sort of ivory grey kind of colour. That one. And then when that's dry, that will have to have some, just expand that a little bit, have to have some more shadows put on to make it correct and then I'm going to make this one behind here this is going to be pink again and um, let me see and this one over here could hang on let's go for this one shall we we've got a lot of a lot of sort of pinky Brownie. I'm 
blue stripe around the middle of that one. And if you feel that your own original photo or the, um, if you're working from life, if you feel they're a bit boring, you can always just make it up, make it more exciting. And this one we're going to do pink potters. Oops. I'm going to add some sepia in there just to ring the changes. of uh, yeah, quite a nice grey. Is that one dry yet? Near enough. So we'll put a line round there and a line round there and then we'll just drop that in and then we'll let that lead and see what happens. The worst thing that can happen is that you have to paint over it with a dark colour, isn't it, if, if it uh, seems to have gone wrong. This one's going to be yellow and when it's dry we'll put some orange, some more of this colour. We'll just drop a little bit in to start with. And um, okay, and a light grey here, um, which was this was um, just. Potter's pink and cobalt blue, giving us a nice lilac-y grey. Here was uh, beige with dots, so we'll just put in a beige undercoat and then I'm going to put in some sepia just because I haven't used that yet and a bit of blue. And leave that to do its thing. This one's going to be another Potter's Pink one with rings when it's dry. And uh, this one is going to be grey violet, that's cobalt blue and Potter's Pink. Then when that's dry I'm going to put some stripes around it. And then I think I'm going to do one which has got a sort of greenish tone to it which is going to be this one. So that's Potter's Pink and Quinacridone, no, sorry, that's uh, Cobalt Blue and Quinacridone Gold. Very light.
And then I think I might do this one in a slightly darker gray. So Potter's pink, cobalt blue. one up here we'll do this in burnt sienna mostly with a little bit of cobalt blue to give it a somewhat grayish brown tone like that I just want to apologise if the lighting of the page is um, annoying you by going uh, light and dark as we go along. It's um, we we do all our filming in um, daylight because artificial light is very expensive to buy, and we don't really know what to get yet. And uh, so we haven't bought any yet, but, um, and most of the time, I'm going to put some texture in this with my Molotov cocktail. I suddenly think I need that. Uh, most of the time it's okay because generally speaking, it's fairly overcast here, but I've got skylights, which are covered in algae and moss and God knows what else. And uh, so that kind of filters the light, and most of the time it is a pretty even light, and it's been quite a success. But today, I don't know what's going on. This morning it was like the back end of November, and now all of a sudden we've been swept back into high summer. Um, and the sun is going behind the cloud and then coming out, and then going behind the cloud and then coming out. So uh, I'm afraid our poor camera, uh, which is a phone, is not dealing very well with that. Yeah. Now, as I'm painting this, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I wish I had given myself such and such, but <clears throat> you mustn't do that, because if you do that, you'll end up with a hodgepodge of different colours, which will not look at all harmonious. You don't want to have more than seven, six colours. I've got five and a mix, and uh, you really don't want to um, risk it. If you go more than five colors, there's a very good chance that it will become unharmonious. And that wouldn't do, would it? I think this one's going to have to be yellow of a sort. Um, Greenish yellow, probably. We'll start off with green and we will grey it down in places like next to the other yellow. We'll put a little bit of blue there. Following the line of the shell's growth, I think kind of blotchy but that looks okay and um, now at this point I'm getting close to the end I've got one two three major color blocks there so it's a good idea to take a moment and have a look and see uh, what we want to put here I think we probably want to balance out the yellow so this is probably going to go yellowish here and this one uh, it's got pink either side of it, so it doesn't want to be pink. It's got blue either side of it, so it doesn't really want to be blue. This is a greenish yellow, so it doesn't want to be greenish yellow. So, you know, this is the point at which it's dangerous because you say to yourself, oh, I'll just, uh, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll get some purple or something. But um, I resist that. 
on my original that is just plain very light grey so we're going to go with a very light grey and that means another mixing because our very light grey was cobalt and potter's pink and a fair bit of water. I am using my water brush today. I've been a good girl and the last two days I have used um, proper brushes. But this afternoon it, I decided this would work well if I used the water brushes. So I decided to do that. And so this one is going to be um, burnt sienna because this is yellow, so we're not next to burnt sienna. That's mostly potter's pink, so we're not next to burnt sienna. This is quinacridone, that's gray. So I think we can probably safely say we can dash in there with some burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of sepia. Okie doke, so that's that. This one over here, what did I say? I said I thought that needed to be quinacridone, didn't I? So we'll do that. But we will soften it down a bit, I think, with some Potter's Pink. A touch of blue. Okay, so we've got one little one sitting up here. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so we can now we can start coming in with the, the markings. So sepia and um, cobalt blue for this one, I think. And that is kind of like that. So we're going to Do that for the minute. Um, what else have we got? This one here. That wants rings going that way, doesn't it? So that's the same colour. But that's to say blue and uh, Is pink. And this one here that needs a slightly darker bluish. There's a hair in there. Where did that come from? I don't suppose it was the cat. He's still asleep. Um, sepia and cobalt blue. Gives me a nice uh, dark um, greyish brown, brownish grey.
Okay, now this one. We want um, sepia. This one, I think we'll just have um, burnt sienna. This one. Make this one a bit darker. And these ones need some shadow where they meet the ones that they're next to. So that's Potter's Pink and probably a bit of Cobalt Blue in there. And the same can be done to that one. This one needs lines going this way. Then when that's dry, we'll rub off the masking fluid. This also, lines going that way, coming into the center. And then bluish gray on this one. I think we'll do the same on this one down here. And then uh, this pinky color. more quinacridone gold on there and maybe a little bit of that's sienna too drop in some water from the brush not too much though because this paper is well it's not too bad is it but um, and then here this has got a few another line of color on that. Now on this one, <clears throat> a 
Okay, who hasn't had their top coat? This one here, we'll do some bands around him. Okay, so then the next step is going to be to mix up some dark paint. So we'll want sepia and cobalt blue. Plenty of sepia, plenty of cobalt blue. Make that nice and dark. We don't want to use black, but we want a nice dark gray. And then we'll start painting in the background. If you feel you need a pointed brush, then as I do all of a sudden, Okay, then what you do is you make do with what you've got because I want this color to be quite intense and what that regular brush wanted me to do was to dilute the paint quite strongly with water. Well, I didn't want to do that. You might need a little bit of concentration on this. And this is the step that really makes this painting, I think. And it doesn't matter if your hand shakes a little bit because the shells have a irregular edges, don't they? And far, far, far from being geometric. Although they are based on a geometric pattern, their foundation is geometric, but what we see isn't regular anyway, is it? Especially since it's been, uh, you know, eaten up by the sea. Maybe this is a bit like Zen Tangle, just uh, patiently filling in the, the gaps. That's a bit damp there. I'll come back to that bit.
When it's completely dry, you should be able to rub out any of the pencil marks that are still visible. If you don't paint over them, that is, when you're doing this. Hmm, I know what I was going to ask people. I don't know if anyone's heard of, um, well, I'm sure you have, Inktober or anyone does it. I was thinking it might be nice to to do that. I think I thought the original idea was to use ink and do a an ink a pen and ink drawing every day throughout October. So anyway, I don't know what they're planning on doing this year. Whoever they might be, I don't even know. But um I will be doing that. I will be taking a probably a fountain pen and a sketchbook and I'm going to do a sketch every day in ink, pen and ink. So, just to let you know, I'll be putting those videos up in October. It might be part of another video. We might just do a, a quick pen and ink sketch as part of a, another subject. I don't know yet. I haven't thought about it at all. I'm just talking off the top of my head at the moment. I have to talk to the boss. See what she thinks. I hope this isn't going to run under the paper. I'm not sure about this particular washi tape. Whether it really sticks well enough. So we might have a mucky edge, I don't know, we'll see. Can't believe that kitten's still asleep. It's so funny watching the kitten learn. He learnt today that he can jump two and a half feet vertically. So now he's, he's become three-dimensional cat. He can not only run around on the ground as if he was a complete and utter lunatic, but he can jump. Ha <laughs> ha! Suddenly everything is fair game. Oh, and we've put up the first of the bundles of sketches. For those of you who would like to save yourself some time, if you want to download um, the whole bundle of the sketches that we've done over the summer, 
all of the uh, hedgerow sketches with the uh, flowers and the bees and the, the birds and everything. Tamsin has put them all together into one um, bundle that you can go to the website and you can download all of that all together in one uh, fell swoop without having to click on that umpteen links and everything to get the whole lot. And uh, we have set a, a price for that, a suggested price of um, just a few dollars, um, but you can reduce that if you want. You don't have to pay. We're just doing it on a kind of um, pay whatever you want to pay basis. They do take quite a surprising amount of time to do, to be quite honest. I think it takes Tamsin almost as long to, uh, well, the two of us, I first of all have to sketch the painting and then uh, we have to scan it and then we have to upload it and then we have to uh, put it onto the website. And uh, all of that takes quite a lot of time actually. And, uh, but we're doing it, you know, we're quite happy to do it. But if you feel you'd like to put a little contribution to that bundle so that we can carry on doing it indefinitely. Otherwise my husband might send me out to work. If I don't make any money on YouTube, he'll say, I know you're 67, but it's time you made yourself useful. You're not profitable, or not a profit, uh, not a rent, what do they say in, in French? They say rentable, you're not rentable, which doesn't mean rentable. It means you're not, you don't pay back uh, my investment. C'est pas rentable. It's not worth it. No, I wouldn't say that on a good day anyway. So we've got the structure of all of the uh, shells and we've got the most of the background in and the thing that we need to do now is to let it dry before we fiddle with it and then just come in at the last minute and do a few more touches. And I'm going to see whether or not the washi tape has protected my edges. So I'll be back in a tick. Okay, so this is now completely dry. I've left it uh, for as long as it took me to drink a cup of tea and and watch a quick video about dogs and cats. And um, so now I'm coming in with my eraser, which is the best way that I've found of taking off the masking fluid. And I'm just, oh, I've taken away the um, um, washi tape as well. And uh, that came off quite well. So that was okay. That was a bit of a test for the washi tape because I wasn't sure if the paint was going to run underneath, but it hasn't, it's actually fine. So we're we'll just to uh, get rid of these little blue dots and streaks and things. And uh, that will bring a little bit more light to the overall effect. And of course, while you're doing this, you're also rubbing off some of the um, lines, as well, paper, pencil lines that, uh, that you made and you might not want to keep. And the other thing is, if uh, when you rub off the masking, you don't like the dead white that you're revealing underneath, you can of course just go over it with some nice light, a nice light wash. To bring it back to a an off-white colour, really, which is sometimes nice. I think I'll probably do that with most of these because we don't want this super white effect. Um, now, 
Is there any more in there? No, but we might want to get rid of some of these uh, pencil lines. And some of them we don't because sometimes they look quite nice and they give a little bit of extra three dimensionality. We don't want to be prejudiced against pencil lines, do we? Okay, so there's a couple more up there for blue dots. Right. Hmm, I think there's still a little bit here too. Okay, I think that's pretty cleaned up, so I'm going to stop there and uh, have a quick think and I'll come back and do the last stage. So now I've rubbed off all of the uh, masking fluid, I'm going to come back in with some, uh, some more colour, some shadowy lines, just to soften the bright white, which we don't really want. We want some contrasting lights, but we don't want it too bright. And uh, in fact, indeed, we need some darks here too. So we'll just drop in a few of those and we'll let that dry. And um, on this one up here as well, I think we just need, just need a, little, a little bit of variation in the shadow, just to give it some roundness. So following the line of the contours. And um, on this one, the lines, whoops. The lines come up towards the center. Just need a few dark dots in there like that. And this one, we just need to go over with a, a variety of just some texture, a bit of, um, a bit more, um, Potter's Pink. A little bit of sepia with burnt sienna, just in a few places. And um, this one here too, that requires just a few extra shadows. Um, really we're pretty much there to be honest um, I don't want to spoil anything by continuing on I mean it's probably a good idea to pop in and sharpen up some of the edges if you feel that you haven't quite got them right the first time sometimes you know the paint moves away from where you left it and when you come back it's gone to live with someone else um, I think we need some dark there. And 
um, yeah, it's just a case at this point of just um, checking to make sure that you haven't left out any of the important darks, like that one there, for example. And this could be... little bit here. And maybe we might want to just put a little bit of shadow there because this one is in front. that hard line there so we'll just soften that up and block that away so we don't want that hard shadow oh uh, this one requires Blue grey. I think that's probably enough. You could go on. You could go on forever, really. Well, about this one. But I think that will do. So I'm going to call that finished. And um, yeah, so there's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. It's quite a long meditative uh, painting, that one. So if you feel like spending an hour and a bit on something that's not too demanding and has a very strong relationship with this, not these ones, they were uh, another project, but this one here, very similar kind of thing. It's not quite dry yet, um, but in a second, when we show you the details of the painting at the end here, it will be, it will be dry. Um, please give us a like and subscribe. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, that would be wonderful. Please leave any comments you might have or any questions you've got in the comments below, in the um, comment boxes below the video. I always read them. I do read them and I try to reply to as many as possible. Um, we've also just opened up channel membership for people who might be interested in building a closer relationship with us. If you go to the channel home page that we have for Diane Anton Studio, you'll see a button there labeled join. You just click on that and it will give you all the details of the three levels of membership that we are offering. And if you're in level two or above, you can um, join the private Facebook group if you're interested in that, which is going to be the way that I'm going to be using that to communicate with people, answering their questions in more detail and um, sharing extra photos and uh, various different things like that that might be of interest to you as you go along your watercolour journey. So hopefully you'll consider that. It starts at $2.99 a month and um, there's no commitment in the sense that you can cancel any time. The higher levels also come complete with um, various other perks which I'm sure you'll find really appealing such as um, free downloads and uh, all sorts of cool stuff as they say these days or at least they did a few years ago. Um, so I'll let you go now and uh, it's half past six time to do the tea and I will let you get on with your day. Look forward to seeing you here again tomorrow and uh, for a little bit more nostalgia and gentle painting. So bye for now everybody. Bye bye.